Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Praying with Power and Purpose. This is author, editor, speaker, and teacher Zari Banks. I hope you are having a wonderful day in Jesus. I hope you are giving him the praise and the honor that are due to his name because he is absolutely worthy of it all. Um, Speaking of, let's go ahead and give him thanks, and then we'll move into today's topic. Lord, I praise you. I worship you. I magnify you. I'm so humbled and honored to be used by you. I praise you for deliverance, Lord. You are such a wonderful Father. I praise you that you're on our side and that you always point us in the right direction, that when we call out to you with a humble heart, you come. I thank you for teaching me, not letting me continue to move in religion and in church tradition, but actually teaching me the truths of who you are and the words that you speak. I praise you for what you're doing in my life, and I honor you and bless you, and I give you all glory for what you're allowing me to do in the lives of others. I'm just amazed that you would even look my direction, much less allow me to set the captives free. I praise you, Heavenly Father, for the anointing, and I bless your name, Jesus. Amen. All right, real quickly before I forget, because I possibly will, happens all the time, don't forget to go to www.zearthwords.org and buy some books over there, look around, um, read some of the things that I've written and posted around the web on the portfolio page. Also look at the bookstore and view the books, um, the other spiritual growth books that are there. They will bless you and help you in this journey. We cannot do it alone. We cannot do it only with the church and the Holy Spirit teaches us everything and brings brings us and leads us into all truth but the lord created us for relationships and some breakthroughs don't come until you partner with somebody else so make sure you are obedient and submissive to whatever he's telling you to do even the strange instructions those strange instructions usually bring about the biggest miracles and anointings that are available to us so definitely heed those words from the lord um I have been praying over and warring actually for a promise. And there's a scripture um, in, I think it's in um, the Timothy's, where Paul is telling Timothy that um, that he needs to watch over the prophetic words spoken over him and that he needs to war a good fight for them. And it's so true. You know, those promises that the Lord gives us, they don't come without warfare. I've recognized recently that as soon as the promise comes, the, the battlefield gets set. And if you're not sure what the battlefield in front of you looks like, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal it to you. I've shared with you before that um, when I was fighting for my son, I asked the Lord, um, and this this um, information came from my mentor, Patty Cake. She told me to ask the Lord to show you the battlefield. And so he showed me the battlefield. And I was thinking um, when my son, when I was going through my custody battle, that the battle was around my son, but it was not. The battle was around me. And it makes sense now because of the way the Lord is using me in deliverance ministry and to teach the Word of God. And so, if you need to know what the battlefield looks like in front of you, ask Him. It's so awesome. Like the, the promise that I'm warring for right now, the, the number of enemies on the battlefield is already decreasing. And I've only really been um, focused on this last section of it for a little over a week or so, maybe a little bit less. But anyway, it's interesting. So the the Lord gave me this promise, and it's a long time coming. It's a promise that's almost, um, let's see, it's almost, it's going on like a year and eight months old. And so I was asking the Lord a couple of weeks ago, I'm like, did you really make this promise to me, or is it was it my imagination? And if you did make the promise, what battle am I not fighting correctly so that I can receive this promise and then immediately he confirmed like 11 different ways yes that is the promise that I have for you I gave you that promise do not doubt it and then um, he didn't say anything about the battle and then the next day I'm up getting ready and then the Lord flashed a picture in my mind and he said to look at these five things right here in your life And I looked at those five things, and I saw that each one of them was broken or fragmented. And the Lord said, that's a curse. So he identified to me that a curse that is operating in my bloodline, and I immediately got to work on destroying that, you know, asking for forgiveness, repenting, you know, for all of my ancestors, all of my relatives, everything. You know, whoever brought that 
into my family. And then, of course, while I'm going through and confessing, the Lord always brings up ways that I contributed to, you know, that curse continuing. And it happens all the time through words that were spoken. He brought to mind words that I spoke when I was like 16 years old, at least maybe even younger, that were adding to that curse being active in my life and stopping my promise. So if you are still one of those people who doesn't have control of your mouth yet, you have got to get control of that. You know, just doing things as, as you know, as s- simply as confessing your sickness you know, to other people and on Facebook and stuff like that. Those things are agreeing with the enemy and they will keep you bound. The Bible tells us Proverbs 18, 21. It's one of my go-tos, one of my faves. The power of life and death is in the tongue and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. If you constantly love talking about I'm sick, this hurts, you know, I didn't get this, this is not working out for me. You're loving that because that's what you're voicing and that's what you're going to have in your life. Whereas I'm constantly decreeing and declaring that I'm taking more and more territory for the kingdom of God. And I am constantly, constantly taking territory for the kingdom of God. And the thing about taking territory is, it's just like anything else. um, Dr. Murdoch says that the things that you respect come toward you. You know, a lot of times he's talking about finances because that's where his anointing is. He's a kingdom moneymaker, but it goes for everything else. You know, if you, if you are so enthralled with sickness and debt and doubt and despair those things are going to come running to you because that's what's inside of you and out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and whatever you're agreeing with is going to manifest itself and it's in your life so if you're agreeing with all those negative things of course the enemy is you know camping out at your door waiting for you to say something stupid so that he can call his friends and where I get that from is a vision the Lord gave me the other day he gave me a word for somebody and he told me to tell her that he has plans for her and she needs to get her mouth under control if she wants to be used by him. And of course, he said it in a nice way. That's just the Zari interpretation. And when I gave her the word, I did not give her the Zari interpretation. I gave it to her as he said it to me. Um, so basically what he said was like every time she you know gets in a specific environment there's a little demon sitting on her shoulder waiting for her to say something dumb aka negative so as soon as she says something negative he is like he snaps his fingers and calls for reinforcements so basically she's cursing herself over and over and over again because she doesn't have control of her mouth and this is the way I've said this before you know, this is the way things work. Let's say you've got a horrible headache. You've had it all day. So you get on Facebook and say, oh, I've had this headache all day. It won't go away. It won't go away. Other people jump on. Oh, I know about those kind of headaches. I get those headaches every once in a while. Okay, so now you've got two people in agreement with the enemy, with sickness and with headaches that don't go away. So you're inviting more headaches and more negativity and demonic interference into your life. Two of you, you got into agreement. That is so dumb. And I can call you dumb because I used to be dumb. You know, I said this before. I admit to you, I confess, I was the queen of stupid for many, many years. You know, I was the queen of stupid many years. My own son, when we were discussing some things last night, said, um, you know, it was like you were, you're book smart, but not life smart. Okay, well, I want to be life smart. I don't want to be an idiot walking around doing stupid stuff. You know, and the Bible calls you foolish. When you do things contrary to God's will and God's way, you are a foolish person. Same thing as being called stupid. Stupid, foolish, stupid, foolish, foolish, stupid. They, you know, they're interchangeable as far as I'm concerned. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm trying to help you to get to a new place. You know, I'm trying to help you so you don't end up having to suffer through anything that I suffered through because of the dumb stuff that I used to do. And I used to constantly do dumb stuff and I used to be proud of it. And I used to share with other people, which is not helping anybody. You know, don't be that way. Get your mouth together, get your insides together and let God direct. It talks about in the Bible, are you led by the flesh or are you led by the spirit? Let God lead you. Be led by the spirit. If you want victory, you have to be led by the spirit. If you want permanent victory, you know, those temporary victories don't matter. You know, 
you want when healing and deliverance and all that stuff comes, you want to be able to keep it. You don't want to fall right back into the enemy's traps because you haven't gone through the whole process. You need to be able to go through in faith all the way to the end and be victorious in all things and in all areas. It is possible. You know, storms will come, but at the same time, even though the weapons are formed, they will not succeed if you're led by the Spirit. And even when they do come, one of the reasons they won't succeed is because you have a heads up. When you're in tune with the Lord, you have a heads up for everything that's going to happen. And it's awesome. All right, I think that is just about it. I just wanted to share with you that, um, you know, generational curses and curses that, that can be spoken over you and all this stuff, those things still happen, but the Lord wants you free from that. So that he can give you abundance. And if you partner with him, you will get free. You know, the only time you won't is if you if you say, you know, I put my hands up. It's just always going to be this way. No, that's not anything near to what God says. The only thing that doesn't change is him. He's the only thing that doesn't change. Everything else changes. The Bible even says everything that can be shaken will be shaken. You know, so yes, your faith is going to be tested. Your marriage is going to be tested. Your kids' relationships are going to be tested. Your relationship with your kids are going to be tested. Everything's going to be shaken because, you know, God told us that was going to happen. But with the foundation, which is Jesus Christ, you'll be all right. You know, you may be shaken, but you're not going to be destroyed. Okay? So, again, I'm going to repeat because, you know, I get rambalicious. It's just what I do. It's just who I am. I'm going to repeat that when there is a curse operating in your life, you will not be able to get the promise that's on the other side of it until you get deliverance. How do you get deliverance? It's a process. You ask the Lord. Sometimes all it requires is a prayer. Sometimes you need to go and have somebody who is a deliverer lay hands on you. You know, sometimes you need to get a specific book. Sometimes you need to fast. Sometimes you need to cast out a demon. It just depends. Ask the Lord what to do. He's on your side. He will give you exact instructions. Follow them. He may not give you all the instructions at one time. He may give you an instruction at a time and give you more as you obey. Just do it. Listen. You know, you listen to dumb people on TV telling you buy this, buy that. So listen to the Lord while he's telling you how to be successful in all things. Okay? Always give him first precedence over everything. And humble yourself. If you are not coming to the Lord in humility, he's really been speaking to me about humility lately. If you do not come to the Lord in humility, you are not going to get anywhere. You are not going to get anywhere. You have to at least be broken enough to say that, you know what, Lord, what I'm doing over and over and over again does not work. I need you now. I need you. And as soon as you do that, he will run. Like I imagine him hopping over buildings like a superhero or like, you know, a giant in a movie or something like that. Trying to get there to help you, to give you the strategies and the tools and everything that you need to be successful in all things. All right. So the Lord wants you to be free. He will lead you to freedom. He will lead you into truth. You just have to trust him and obey. Trust him and obey and act. You know, I was talking with a friend earlier today how um, I spent a lot of time when I was um, when I was being harassed at my school district in in Marana that, you know, I was saying, well, no, I'm just going to let the Lord take care of it. The only problem with that is there are times when the Lord says, stop, I'm going to take care of this. But that's not most of the time. Most of the time he tells you, I need you to do this and then I'm going to do these 13 things and then I need you to do this and then I'll do these 45 things and then I need you to do this and then I'll do these 90 things because he's a multiplier. He never does anything, you know, just a little. But you have to take that step toward him. In order, you know, you have to act first. Same thing with conf with confessing Jesus as your Lord. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart, but then you confess him with your mouth, and that's your salvation. So you actually have to participate with him. You know, he does the bulk of the work, yes, but you do have to move toward him in order for him to pick up your cause. Okay, again, got rambalicious. I hope and pray and declare in Jesus' name that I got the point that you need across to you. If you are one of those people who, who picks up Galatians 3.13, it says, oh, well, Christ became a curse for me. I don't believe that curses exist. I feel bad for you because the enemy is going to be kicking your tushy for many, many moons, and you won't be able to understand why because the spirit of deception is all over that. Um, 
Let me see. I bless you in Jesus' name. If you need help with deliverance, please, 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 please get in contact with me. I mean, I'm not the only one who knows deliverance. There are tons of people out there who know deliverance. Cindy Trim is huge on deliverance. Um, let me think who else. If, you, if you're on Facebook, Apostle Grace Anderson, she's excellent on deliverance. There's a book by the Robesons, Dr. James and Carol, and it's called um, The Strong Man's His Name, What's His Game. He's, they're huge and skilled on biblical deliverance. Uh, that's another thing. You want biblical deliverance. Don't, don't be, you know, doing movie deliverance. Also, um, Neil T. Anderson, fantastic on deliverance. F superb. The Seven Steps of Freedom, they're awesome. I've gone through that process two times formally with somebody else, two times kind of over the phone with Patty Cake in 2012, and then I have gone through, the, you know, just praying over those prayers tons of times, tons of times in the months that my son and I were apart because, you know, like when everything's going wrong, you want to cover all the bases. So I was doing everything I could to cover all the bases, but the Lord used that, you know, that movement toward him, he, I've been gotten free from so many things that were operating in my family and we were believers you know growing up in church and still all this stuff you know was operating in my family all this demonic stuff operating in my family because we didn't know the truth of God's word you know you have the word but you also need that Holy Spirit breath on it to make it come alive and give you understanding all right um, zwritewords at gmail.org if you have prayer requests, anything like that I love to pray over those prayer requests with you, and I love to get the praise reports that always say, oh thank you for praying for me, this happened for me, it's awesome and it's not that I am doing anything because everything is done by the Lord but the thing is when you partner with Him you are you get blessings multiplied back into your life, everything you make happen for someone God makes happen for you that's what Dr. M says based on Ephesians 6 8 so if you would honor me with to be able to partner with you to pray and and entreat our Heavenly Father, I'd be honored to do that because he comes through big time. He comes through big time. Like you if you don't know, you better ask somebody. All right, I'm getting sidetracked. All right, love you guys. God bless you. Bye bye.